Week 10, Problem 4. A transverse traveling wave on a taut wire has an amplitude of 0.2 mil millimeters and a frequency of 500 hertz. It travels with a speed of 196 meters per second. Right? Transverse wave just means like it's one of oh, those kind of waves as opposed to compressional. If the wave equation is written in the form of this, what are the parameters A, K, and omega. Okay? Okay, sounds good. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it in my, the way I like it, in my happy place, so to speak. So, bam. Normally plus, and then I'll put in the plus phase angle, where in this case it's gonna be zero. All right. So let's see here. We know we have an amplitude of 0 0.2, 2, 0 0.2. I'm going to say that's 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Because it's really 0.2 times 10 to the negative third, and then next to another. Yep. So, oh, there we go. 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Excellent. Um, then we're going to have 2 pi over lambda. Do we know what the uh, wavelength is? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Okay. And we don't know. Hope. Oh. So x can be x. And we don't know what v is. Oh, what do we do? Speed of 196. 96 meters per second. And then we'll say no phase angle. All right. So. We know that omega, which is the angular frequency, as we can tell by here, uh, radians. You'd like to, uh, I like to think of that. Radians are uh, unitless, but when you think of radians, you think of 2 pi. Um, so it's radians per second. Mm -hmm. So I have memorized that um, omega equals 2 pi f, where we know that Velocity equals distance divided by time. Uh, distance is kind of um, has the same units as wavelength, so meters. Mm -hmm. And then frequency is hertz or one over seconds. So velocity equals distance over time, which equals lambda f. Therefore, frequency equals hmm, v over f, v over lambda. Because move that guy down there. Yep, there we go. 2 pi v over lambda. Okay? That works. So we know the... So if we solve this out a little bit, we get lambda equals 2 pi v over 2 pi f. Oh, that's convenient. Which equals v over f. Got it. So, let's see here. So down here we have 2 pi over... Hmm... So velocity is 196, 196 over 500 hertz, 196 divided by 500. I think those are both SI units. So 196 is meters per second and 500 is hertz. Okay, so we get an answer like 0 0.392 equals 0 0.392. Okay, so each wavelength is about a third of a meter. 0.392. Okay? And so the wave equation, da da da, da da da, kx, kx. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I totally forgot the sign. Totally forgot sign. Right there sign. Alright, so to convert it from this way to that with kx and omega, what we do is we just multiply these across. We, yep, we basically get rid of this 2 pi over lambda and we put it as part of, so this right here is k. So this is 2 times 10 to the negative fourth sine of and this is going to be 2 pi 
over 0.392 times x minus 2 pi times 196 over 0.392 t. So make these do purple. So this guy right here will be k, this guy will be omega, and this guy will be amplitude. So amplitude, way easy. I can do that one right now. 2 times 10 to the negative 4th. 2 times 10 to the negative 4th. Got it. All right, now we're going to do k, which is 2 pi divided by Hmm. I'm just going to do it 0 0.392. Times 196. Times 196. There we go. And our answer is. That's kind of big. So. 2 pi 196. 2 pi 196. 0.392. Okay, I'll believe it. 3142. 314. No, that's supposed to be K. Three one four two. There we go. And that's radians per second. Now, to find k, which is measured in radians per meter, so 2 pi divided by 3.92, 0.392. 2 pi divided by 0.392, got it. We have 16. So it's 16 radians per meter. Okay. The mass per unit length of this wire is that. Find the tension of the wire. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to do Google. Tension in a string wave. Standing waves on a string. Okay, I'm going to go with this guy. Hyperphysics, why are you so slow? Come on, yep. String wave. There we go, right there. That's exactly what I want there. Nope. Velocity, tension. Yeah, we can, we can work with that. So here's what we got. Velocity equals square root of tension, which is force here, over mu, where mu is mass per unit length. Okay? So I'm going to say, nope, velocity equals square root of tension over mu, where mu equals uh, mass per unit length. So we have 4 grams per meter, but we need it in SI units. So we need to convert these grams to kilograms. So I have 10 to the third grams per kilogram, and this will equal four times 10 to the negative third kilograms. Okay, so solving for tension, tension equals velocity squared times mu. So square both sides, multiply by mu. Let's see, velocity is what? 196? 196, 196 equals 196 squared times 4 times 10 to the negative third. Yeah, that seems reasonable. 196 squared times 4 times 10 to the negative third. Bum, bum, bum. 196 squared times 4 times 10 to the negative third. And that gives us 
0.7 newtons equals 153.7 newtons. 153.7, okay? Bam. And that's just a formula you should probably memorize. Um, yeah. Um, and intuitive, it dimension, if you do the whole dimensional analysis thing, it makes sense. Tension is mass times acceleration. So you have kilograms, meters per second squared. And you're dividing it by kilograms divided by mass. So that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocals, meters over kilogram. Kilograms cancel. You get meters squared. You get meters squared over second squared. Square rooted equals meters per second, which is what velocity is. So that makes sense. Or at least doesn't not make sense. 153.7. All right. And so I know I hate memorizing formulas. It's the bane of my existence. But it might be worth worth it to at least recognize that for a string, this is what you're looking for. Um, I think there's a way to derive it versus you know with a looking at transverse waves and for no not not worth your time in life. Memorize this. If you're given an equation sheet, just be able to recognize it. If you're not given an equation sheet, memorize it ten seconds before the test. It's not a long-term value to your life. Alright? There's problem four on to problem five.